Who else but Donnie back? Okay, I explained the filtration system on the last video, the last second last video about Husky versus Still with the air injection system, how the filter systems on the Huskies are much better than the Still. And uh, if you don't believe me on that, check out your motors after your run stills for a long time. Um, bigger ones for falling or production type saws and you will see the wear they get on the intake and other parts of bearings compared to Husqvarna's. So let's, I'm not knocking stills though. Don't get me wrong there. I think still has a great products. They build some of the best saws in the world in, in certain classes. But the Husqvarna people have a really, or John had originally developed, I believe, the air injection system or turbo system, they want to call it, and they perfected it. So right here, I'm going to show you how it works. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And we'll be able to look at that a little better. Well, we already are zoomed in. So let's try this out. Oh, my goodness. Every time I do a video, my phone's down on a charge. But hey, look at this cord I got. It's like 10 feet long. I don't know where I got it from. It's kind of weird, though. Okay, so let's plug that in. It's going to charge while I do it. So here we go. This is how it works. Still has air injection systems now, too, on a lot of their, their saws, the 261, uh, 362. A lot of the newer ones have it, okay? Actually, I have a, um, is that a 462 right there? It is, but I don't have the starter off. I'll show you. But I'm going to explain the system to you. So right here, the air, the, the air injection tube or air jet or um, whatever you want to call it, man, is right here. So when the flywheel is turning, it is taking a lot of fresh air at a certain distance up through this plastic piece here, the air injection um, channel, into this channel to the carburetor area. So it's forcing air, like forced air, up to the air filter to give it more air, you know, more power, right? And if you don't agree with that, I'll tell you something, man. When you don't, when you do not have the top cover on a, on a saw, Husqvarna, like this, okay? When you adjust the carburetor on an adjustable carburetor with a non-rev limiter ignition, let's say we um, set this at 13.5, okay? With the non-rev limiter, limiter ignition. See, it's 13.5. Then I put the top cover on, and you run it again. Now it's 13.7. Gives it more RPM. Try it out if you don't believe me. Anyways, the way this works is all the forced air comes up through this tube here into your air filter system and keeps it clean. All the other, and the way, of, the reason I'm telling you this, when I told you that in the last video, how you pack sawdust on it and it goes right into the filter on a still, where a husky doesn't so much, because it all goes up out of the outside of this, out through your fins and out, where the, the good air comes around from the fins of the flywheel and goes a certain distance into this tube and gets you that forced air up into the carburetor. All the junk comes past out of this area and out from the saw. I've seen uh, these that are broken and notice that guy's filters are plugged because they never... Um, change this after having like maybe a, a rope break or a pulley problem on their saw then this gets damaged the air jet then they they didn't replace it right so anyways that's how it works air injection it, it's actually quite cool I, I i think it's like a great system when husky developed this or john's right actually to begin with begin with not sure if it was husky or John Sered, you know, I don't know when John Husky took over John Sered and actually changed that, but John Sered saws had it first. So maybe they were still their own, own division then before Husqvarna took them over. 
Um, I could ask an engineer at Husky and let you guys know that with what year it was, but I don't know, whatever. It Th doesn't matter. They all have it now. Still saws have it now because they picked up on it. I believe Husqvarna had a patent on this for a certain amount of time, and then other people picked up on it and they came up with it. <coughs> I believe some Echoes kind of have it now, and um, Dalmar, like Makita's, also have it still now. Or have it now, not still have it. So there you go. That's how the injection system works. It gets the forced air up into the carburetor area and takes the crap out over the so um, cylinder out the other side of the shroud here. And that's why I was saying how the Husqvarna's have barely any air filter or debris in the air filter compared to the still after you run them for a while. I got a beef stew brewing upstairs. Shelly just got home. I better get up there and stir it up and get it ready. Take the old fuzzy dog out for a walk tonight. <coughs> I have got him on a couple times today, but trying to get him out. Also on the 390 here, this is the 390 by the way, for Tyler Hewitt, Hewlett. I put the non river limiter ignition on them, the black ones. Part number. Finally got it for you guys. Someone is asking me about that. 544 0470 some different models of Husqvarna's have the same ignition, but they have different part numbers. Don't ask me why, but they do. This rev limiter ignition is a 13,000 rev limiter ignition. Nothing wrong with that really with a big saw for a long bar. But a lot of my customers, when they're, when they're on top of a big log and they're, they're uh, cutting the branches or the limbs, they want the, the, the RPM. They like the RPM so they can neat, get it quick and get back to it. But if you do have the black ignition on here, make sure you adjust the carburetor properly. <coughs> I rev these saws, the 390s, at around 136 to 138. They don't need to rev any more than that. A bigger displacement saw, you don't need to rev as much as a, as a smaller one. They have the torque, you know, you don't need to use that RPM. You're in the wood all the time with a long bar, okay? But the 13,000 one, <laughs> when you're when you're limbing and stuff, it's with that, bah, 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 you know, the guys, the guys hate that because they're so used to running old school saws that they, they get discouraged of that. There's nothing wrong with it, though. They should really deal with it, but they like it when I change it to that after it's ported and the muffler mod's done, and then they can, it, it just rocks, right? Yeah. So, um, what else was there? God, sometimes it just lives in here. Uh, well, well, well. Yeah, so yeah, if you are changing condition, make sure the carburetor is set right. It's same as on like a 461 still, or, um, well, not the newer Mtronic ones, but the 461 stills, some guys who put the um, 066 or 046 or um, 440 coils on them, so they can rev them more, but I don't know why. The, the 461 revs out about 14.7, 14.8 when after I ported them and modified them. There's really no reason to do that. But some guys like it more and figure that that's the way to go. But they're the guys that go through bearings in the bottom end. So there you go. The factories aren't stupid. They set these perimeters for a reason. Uh, we adjust them just a bit. But I like to keep them accordingly to so, that, so they last, right? I've said before, the way I build saws is for work. They're work saws, they gotta last. If they don't last, these big loggers get pretty peed at me, man. They come around here and they wanna, you know, gee, Tony, what happened? But I don't let that happen because I don't make it that way. I just make them all happy and keep them happy. So keep your saw in the way, stick in the ice, rubbing the road. I gotta get up here and finish off my stew. So we can have some beef stew tonight, then take a little fuzzy dog for a walk tonight. Have a great night. Be kind, be safe, be happy. Thursday tomorrow, we see you on the next day that ends with Y. Have a good night. Bye.